up, you guys? I'm back. We are back with another episode of What It Do, Nancy Drew. Y'all, remember the live we had last night where we did in real time, like true mystery solvers and true detectives, in real time, we literally looked at that Jonathan Audi obituaries, right? In real time, we debunked it. And in real time, we connected the chief of police, 16 officers, with being frequent patrons of the Dancing Bear, which is the Freak Golf Depot of Florida. Y'all, we did a lot of work last night. We talked about the Freemasons, but baby, the biggest thing is, I told you I'd be back. I told you I'd do my research. I told you. Y'all, I got some more juice. And baby, it is good. Where y'all want to start out? We're talking about what really happened to Jonathan Odie. I got a question for everybody. Where is Jonathan Odie? There's so many people that want to sit there and be like, what? What? That's not true. That's not true. Then baby, what is true? Where's your research? What are you doing? Because we were the first people to debunk the death hoax in real time. We were the first people to actually get real information and real links. Well, guess what, baby? We are coming back at it. And we're going to actually look at what is going on with Jonathan Audi, where Jonathan Audi is, also the connection between Ron Burkle, Diddy. Ron Burkle is Diddy's. It's been quoted in articles. His sugar daddy, his fairy godmother, um, definitely got kids to his uh, children. We're going to actually get into that because y'all, y'all know when y'all don't see me post all day, you know I be in those streets digging. And since everybody want to talk about receipts, baby, we went to the attorney general of Florida and got some MF and receipts. And I know y'all going to be mad because... I know y'all going to be mad because it's going to be hard. Once again, it's going to be some information and a story you can't run with. So, baby, you just going to have to sit there and keep hating from the sidelines. Isn't that right? Anyway, y'all, let's get into this. Woo! Let's get into this. You guys, let's not talk about anybody else. Let's not talk about their negativity. Let them just sit there and be mad. You mad, you mad, you mad. And that's good. I would be mad too if all I had to say wasn't ish. I would be mad too if I couldn't if I had the analytical skills of a blind hamster. I would be mad too. I would be mad too. But baby, you please. Anyway, y'all, let's keep going, okay? And they can stay mad because, baby, that live, if you guys haven't seen it, it was epic. We discovered so many things. And for the record, what is the first thing we said when we looked into this? We did this as a team. This doesn't seem to be legit. We pulled the Indian videos. We did everything. But the next question, outside of being like, guys, I looked into it. That's not true. Okay, okay, I did it. That's not true. The next thing to ask is the question we asked in the live. And the question I said I would investigate. What's going on with Jonathan Audi? Who are these people? Why do they want us to believe that he's not around? Now, let me tell y'all something. Anybody that is new to anything with media, if you've just been like a regular citizen, you know how Google searches go, okay? People, and this is from... Ariana Grande, Kim Kardashian, down to anything, right? Even FBI, CIA. I'm not saying it's getting there, but we won't get there. What they tend to do is just throw out BS in a Google searches so that it buries stuff. It buries evidence. It buries the truth. So if you have the analytical skills of a blind hamster and look like a drowned rat, right? It's easy just to be like, do 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 especially when your only goal is to debunk Tisa from saying something that she never said, right? When that's your only goal in life, to debunk me, baby, <laughs> you better talk to God about that one because he dropped some new stuff in there. I actually did what I promised and I started looking into the Jonathan Odie because I kept saying, where is he? Why does it seem like people want us to believe that he is no longer there? Now, some people said they clicked on the site and they got an error message. Dummy, you clicking on the wrong leak because plenty of people will say when you put in Jonathan O.D. obituary, there's 10, 11 sites. Again, they're, they're, it's been debunked. But do you know what I did notice while I was looking around? Let's get into 
detective story time. You guys, this is going to be a long live. I found a lot of information. I found a link. It goes all the way up to the Democratic National Party and rock the boat. Baby, buckle up. And if you didn't see the last live for what we discovered with the police chief, and the way that they were one of the biggest clientels of the dancing bear, who was basically the Walmart of freakos, freak offs, the freak offs emporium, right? Everybody want to talk about something we debunk, but who is, wait, that's right, they can't talk about the evidence because if they can't steal it, they don't want to talk about it. Okay, so let's get into this, right? Anyway, so I started doing investigations because I was like, honestly, somebody, whether it's somebody playing in our face, right? Shout out to Erica De Niro, just pop locking in our faces. Somebody is playing in our faces. And instead of just being like, oh, I solved it. Let's actually ask the questions. Why are you doing this? Who's playing in our faces? And what exactly are they trying to hide? Because it's not enough to be like, oh, I solved it. No, until you have answers, you haven't solved anything. So I started doing a little investigation. One. I was like, okay, let's see if we can find Jonathan Oldie. Now, people did say that he is being held in um, the, what is it? The Miami, the Miami-Dade, uh, West County, Miami-Dade Detention Center or something like that, okay? Um, Mid-County, sorry, Mid-County, um, Miami. Listen, he being held somewhere in Miami, all right? Let me not, like, start adding stuff, okay? Of course. And a lot of people are like, that's it, that's it. There can't be anything wrong with them because I don't know the American, baby, I'm American and I know our constitution. And baby, best believe, just like I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, I'm covered in the blood of the law too, okay? Let's actually get in something that people don't know about Florida, all right? This is something important to know as we move into this, okay? Now, and of course, whoever put those obituaries up, whatever, that wasn't the real story. We do know that Odie, right? It's not currently listed on the, well, let's move on. I'll come back to that. I, I Y'all know I made a PowerPoint presentation. Hold on. Let me get into this. Okay. So as you knew, right, this came up in my live. Somebody said, yo, he's being held at the detention center. And I said, really? That's so odd because I have been investigating a lot of things too, okay? And remember when I said, yo, I'm going to investigate this detention center thing because it's not enough somebody teach, uh, uh, sends me something. It's not enough that I can pull it up on Google. You really have to analyze and try to think, what do these things mean? Can they be verified? And if they can, what data points can be connected to each other? So, of course, he is in the Miami-Dade uh, uh, West County correction thing. Don't quote me, but it's MDWC or something or other. Except here's the problem, right? He's still there, and he's still waiting trial. And anyone that knows anything about the U.S. Constitution and American law would already know mm, something's not quite sitting right. Because this offense happened in 2018. We are about to get into 2024. What is an offense that didn't make federal charges? So just to let you guys know, the federal government declined to press charges against him, even though he was saying stuff about Trump and he shot up the Trump Doral Hotel. They did not think it rose to the level of an actual um, uh, any uh, of an actual um, threat of POTUS or anybody near him actually being in danger. They looked at it as the rantings of a crazy person. So that was my first tip, Bob. OK, so you're in Miami-Dade County. You're not in federal. Hmm. OK, that's interesting. So why? If you're in Miami-Dade County, are you still, you haven't come to trial? You guys, you have to remember something. This happened in 2018. Now, again, I'm not saying anything untoward. I am saying that what we're going to do on this live is I'm going to take you along on this live, show you what I found. And when I say this is going to be a sixth sense plot twist, those of you guys that are on my live know that my sixth sense plot twist always come to fruition. Y'all ready for a little bit one? You know what? Let me hit you with a stir of echoes plot twist, right? So I started researching a little bit. And here's what people need to realize about Florida. I do not believe those obituaries, 
But I do think that there's something odd going on. I think everything with Jonathan Odie is odd. I think the interrogation about Diddy was odd. I think the way it was handled was odd. I think the wait time was odd. I'm going to actually detail how weird it all is. And then we're going to get into the connection between Ron Burkle, the Democratic Party. But let me just say this, right? I know people are so proud, you know, to pull up like little, looking like little drowned rats to pull up um, this whole thing. I do want you guys to know that if anybody had just taken the time instead of trying to debunk something I never even said, something that we debunked on live, to actually Google what state law is, they would have known that even all their barking didn't make sense because in the state of Florida, and this is common in a lot of states, you might not know this, a criminal court case does not close on the death of an accused. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that just like a civil case, if I sue you because you uh, you stole my house and you die, my case doesn't go anywhere. I sue your estate. Much like that with a criminal case in the state of Florida, okay, when a defendant passes away, right? And this is them, not just Florida, but most jurisdictions. The death of the accused does not extinguish the charges against them. The case can still proceed and the defendant can be found guilty posthumously. Okay. Florida's survival statute states that no cause of action, that is the reason for the lawsuit, dies with the person. Lawsuits can be initiated, prosecuted, and defended in the name of the person who has passed away. Now, what does that have to do with anything? I just thought that was really, really interesting. And I just wanted y'all to know that maybe taxes and the court system is something you can't get out of. So, but I know what you're saying. But Tisa, they're saying that he's being held in the Miami correctional thing. All right. First plot twist that I thought was really, really interesting that I actually wanted to share with you guys. This is a memo from the Florida state attorney. Let me pull it up on my phone so I can read it. Haters, please, now would be the time to screenshot and zoom in because you have the information to quickly get it from the state. Since I want to go to the state government to get it from Florida state government, this is directly from an internal memo from uh, the Florida, uh, let me just pull it up so I can see it because it's blurry for me right now. This is a memo from the state attorney, 11th Judicial Circuit of Florida, ER Graham Building. It is marked April 8, 2019. It is directly from the desk of H Catherine Fernandez Rundle. She is the state attorney for Florida. It is directed to the chief of police, Hernan M. Organvides. Um, does that name sound familiar? Does that name sound familiar? Does that name sound familiar from the last thing when you put it in with the dancing bear? But it was at the police chief at, at that time. Enclosed is our final report regarding the investigation into the police-involved shooting of Jonathan Odie on May 18, 2008. I'm sorry, May 18, 2018. The officers involved in this incident were Louis Sellers, Albert Tellers, uh, Scott Demby, Raphael Kuhn, Joseph Arzark, right? I'm doing some investigations into them, but just listen, right? The investigation has determined that these officers were legally justified in the use of deadly force by firing their weapons. In that case, no criminal charges will be filed. Now, why would they need to file criminal charges against cops for using deadly force against a man? that was in the Trump Doral talking about some run up and get done up. Well, that's when you come to this interesting tidbit. And this is what started my rabbit hole. And it was the first plot twist. This is directly from the inter-office memorandum. If you guys don't know inter-office memorandums, when they are part of investigations, are published as public documents. They are released to the public. Again, this is directly from the office of Catherine Fernandez Rundle, state attorney. Y'all can screenshot it, zoom in, do a Google search, baby. If you want, I'll put a link to the exact place off of the Florida website. I got it. This is public record, public information, okay? The date is April 2nd, 2019. 
But zoom in a little bit more and let's see what it says. Because this is the first thing that really got me going. I don't know if I can make it bigger, but we'll make it bigger. Um, let's just forward to the part I want y'all to see. One second, y'all. Here we go. Look at this memorandum. It's signed by the governor, by the this, by the builder, the baker, the uh, coffee maker. But do you see what we have in the line? Right? Damn it. I'm ruining my own reveal. I'm trying to give y'all some drama. And it's just going down. Okay, right here if you see, right? This is Ari, the police shooting closeout memo. Case number SAO 6218051800. Zero, zero, 005. Do you see what's right under there? See, here's the thing. And this is the thing that made me wonder about the whole Jonathan Odie thing. This isn't the first time that there's been a death hoax on Jonathan Odie. Now, when I heard, oh, you know, people put stuff on the internet, people play in their faces. Yeah, people do. But to what end? To what end? It's not enough to say, oh, people are playing in our faces. Yeah, we're not done. We figured that out in two seconds. We need to ask ourselves, to what end and why are they playing in our faces? Because when I went down this rabbit hole, and this is the first of many surprises, we found out that the very first death hoax that was placed upon Jonathan Odie, the man that sat there and ratted, well, I don't know if he ratted, he claims he ratted on Diddy. Um, Rick Ross, DJ Khaled, all these people, right? Politicians. The first time a death hoax was visited on, his, on this man was from the state attorney, Catherine Fer uh, of um, Florida, Catherine Fernandez Rundle. If you notice right there, they accidentally, after he was taken into custody and after after he was de, uh, uh, what do you call it, interrogated, after you saw that video where he gave up all those names, okay, we see that, it's li that he's listed as deceased. Do you see what it says right there? The this memo is April 2nd, 2019. This is the police shooting closeout memo. This is a memo she made about the officers using deadly force clearing them of any criminal charges. You see the case number, and then you see, who are we talking about? The deceased, Odie Jonathan. Y'all, again, it leads me back to my first point. What is going on with Jonathan Odie? Is he the man that knows so much? Is Diddy the tip of the iceberg? Because as much as people want to talk about that whole thing that popped up mysteriously on Google, trying to bury and and and, and basically send people off on red herrings, because it worked. People started to think, oh, aha, gotcha, gotcha. You ain't get shit. Because you didn't even take the time to research. The very first time a death hoax happened about Jonathan M. F. and Odie was with the attorney for the state attorney for Florida, Catherine Fernandez Rundle. And baby, this ain't no allegedly. This is written right here on an official interrandum. And listen, screenshot it. Go Google it. It's right there. If you want, I'll put the link in the description box just so y'all can have some content. All right. So again, this goes back to my point when I was thinking, who exactly is Jonathan? Uh, who exactly is Jonathan Odie? And more to the question is, where is Jonathan Odie. Is Jonathan Odie in protective custody? I'm not even joking. Is he in protective custody? Because this showed up along with the report that the state attorney wanted us to see. I have the whole report. I'll show it to you. Okay. But he was arrested May 18, 2018. By April 2nd, 2019, even though he was in police custody, According to them, even though he was in the detention center, according to them, the state attorney put him down as deceased. Now, I did a little digging and a lot of people have gone into, and I'm not saying he's in witness protection. I'm not saying anything. I am saying that I'm trying my best to actually get you guys, right? I'm trying to give you guys the evidence because what I do on my lives is I really do, I research 
but I talk to you guys so we can figure it out together, baby. This is a what it do Nancy Drew mystery. Y'all know I stayed with some Nancy Drew books, right? To, like literally. So I want us to actually think through this together. I have a lot more evidence, but at the end of the day, I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm not here to condense things for you guys. I mean, I'm happy to, y'all know I do that. But at the end of the day, you guys can think for yourself. Half the time y'all be thinking with me, let's actually get to the bottom of this because regardless of what you think is going on between Diddy, Ron Burkle, John Odie, we have to admit, and as I get further into the evidence of this live stream, you, we will see something is just not adding up. It's just not adding up. It's not adding up, and we need to actually talk about it. Hold on, y'all. Okay, let's get into this. Let me get a super chat. Really, Crystal Cave. Mm, thank you. Crystal K Cove said, yeah, you taught us that a few weeks ago. Takes Out Mom is being sued Ari Bank Assault against Takeoff, who's been gone since November two, 2020. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're 2022. Exactly. Just because somebody passes away doesn't mean that the case stops. So just because you pull up court documents and whatnot, great. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But forget all that because that is all noise and chatter. I'm trying to figure out where Jonathan Odie is. I'm trying to figure out where Naughty Love uh, Movement. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I'm trying to figure out, right? Everybody concerned with a dumb death hoax on, what is it, Google but, or YouTube. But if you had done any research, you eventually would have found this and been like, wait a second, that's not the first time a death hoax has happened. At all. Chris Nicole, thank you again so much for blessing me. That's not the first time a death hoax has happened. But the first time it happened, it came from an official desk. Now, I did do some research into witness protection. I'm not saying he's in witness protection, but I would be remiss not to point out that this is often how witness protection stops. They either try to make it seem like they're deceased or that can't work. They basically say, oh my God, we have you in custody, but the court date hasn't come up yet. So everybody thinks they're in custody and in federal or state or whatever protection. And meanwhile, they're rebuilding their life somewhere else. Keep that in mind about we have you in custody, but your court date never comes up. Because this court date that everybody starts talking about, I actually went to the docket. And not just looking at the day of the court date, I actually looked at the whole MF and docket. This docket was about 20 pages long and baby it let me just get through my powerpoint presentation okay let me do this right okay so we go into that right let's talk about what exactly jonathan odie did because when you tie into what he actually did and you tie that into his court date Something ain't adding up and not any maybes. It's just not adding up, okay? Here's the thing with Jonathan Odie. As I said in the last live after we debunked those rumors, right? The one rumors that weren't rumors that we were able to confirm is the chief of police and about 16 officers, maybe more, were clients of the Dancing Bear. The Dancing Bear is a well-known freak off depot, escort agency, P agency, excuse the pun, where people that are bi uh, or straight, but it doesn't matter, pay women to, you know, they have blank for women, but a lot of times they are bought on as escorts. If you guys don't know, Jonathan Odie said that he was one of Diddy's and Cassie's escorts. Now, here's the thing about why that memo from um, the state attorney is uh, so weird, okay? One, that mess that happened between him, Diddy, and Cassie. He said some happened sometime between 2010, 2014. He said that there were 15 occurrences. I believe he hinted that at least 13 were taped, but he definitely said he had 15 occurrences. And he he made a deal with them, and he was supposed to hand over all the filming he had of it, but there was one particular document that he still had that he kept that proved everything. That is what he was saying. Now, is what he's saying is true? I don't know. It hasn't been proven in a court of law. He claims he settled with Diddy. We don't know if he actually settled. We know he went on a cash buying spree for houses shortly after when he alleges he settled. And we also know that prior to him alleging he settled, he only had negative 1,800 in his bank account, okay? Circumstantial evidence, for sure. But baby, 
<laughs> we like circumstances around here. Okay. So the Diddy stuff happened between 2010, 2014. Diddy and Cassie were well known to be in Miami. Okay. They were well known to be in Miami. Diddy was like the king of Miami. Mace was down in Miami. They were at Club Story all the time. Baby, it's everywhere. Just Google Diddy, Cassie, Miami. You're going to see what it do. Diddy was out there hawking uh, Chirac. Interesting enough, Ron Burkle was also out there hawking Chirac. And also, according to this lawsuit that I'm going to bring up at the end that ties all this together, making Diddy pay the devil for everything the devil had put into his life. Assuming you think Ron Burkle is the devil. Okay, so where are we at? That happened 2014. Then he fell off for three years, went a little crazy, okay? He was living his life. Everybody said he was so nice, so focused, whatever. Then just out the blue, out of the blue, he was either in the middle of making breakfast or washing dishes. He stops what he's doing, runs out uh, with a bang bang and American flag and shows up at the Trump Doral Plaza, um, Trump Doral Hotel. Now, this is the part that I need to actually get into a little bit more because I feel I keep glazing over it and I want to break it down for you guys, okay? The issue is, this is directly from the eyewitness it appears that he, we're talking about, of course, Jonathan, was trying to engage our police officers in some type of ambush type of attack, trying to lure our officers into this gunfight. This is the director of the Miami-Dade Police told reporters at, breeding, at briefings, this was uh, Mr. Perez, he did succeed and he did lose. And that's the bottom line. So the funny thing is, they always tried to make it seem like he went in there all crazy and started shooting at civilians. But at the end of the day, even the documents show that he pulled the fire alarm because he wanted everybody to get out. He went into the lobby and went bang, 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 didn't shoot at anyone, just directed the, you know, but that's scary enough, then told the people at the front desk to call the police. He allowed everybody to evacuate and he even pulled the uh um he even pulled the fire alarm to actually get out of it, okay? They engaged in the shootout with them. Now what does that tell you? This goes back to the first interesting thing about how deep the police was in the dancing bear. Yesterday I kind of hinted at it, but today I stand 10 toes down. I do not believe that he went to the Doral just as a random like ba 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 I believe that he went there for the intent purposes of not accosting anybody but law enforcement. Let's not forget that the police chief and officers were exposed for literally being some of the best customers at the Dancing Bear. This is the same place that Diddy and Cassie uh, frequented, according to Odie for male, whatever. Okay. So I find it very, very interesting that he ran in and created, according to the director, according to the director of the Miami Dade Police, it appears he was trying to engage our police officers in some sort of ambush. To me, it makes him look less crazy and it makes it look like he basically just freaked out and wanted to get vengeance on maybe some of the same men that were fr having Diddy style freak calls with them. Allegedly, allegedly, right? This is what he alleges. We don't know. But again, even the Miami police said the goal wasn't to shoot civilians. It was to have some type of ambush style. But y'all, it gets deeper because we're going to tie back into the death hoax that the Florida, <clears throat> since y'all want MFM receipts, I'm going to give y'all what y'all need, right? This is what research looks like, baby. This is what authenticity, I'll, okay, I can't even say it, so I'm going to shut up. But baby, that's what it looks like. That's what it feels like. Smell it, taste it, screenshot it. It's the closest you ever going to come to being able to do any type of research or think or speak authoritatively on anything. Anyway, not y'all. This is for the people in the back. Anyway, this goes down to Catherine. Fernandez Ruiz, the state attorney, the first person to ever do a death hoax on John Audie, Jonathan Audie, find it odd that so many people want to do hoaxes on Jonathan Audie. But let's continue. All right. Let's listen. Let's continue. So anyway, they have the report. They do all this stuff. They find that the police didn't engage in any deadly, uh, well, it was justifiable deadly force. Again, when they actually said that, it was so odd 
uh, the way that they kept trying to make a seem or a hint or imply that Jonathan Odie was no uh, longer in with us. But at the same time, she actually put that he was deceased. Again, y'all can screenshot it, okay? Now, he did hit two officers, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. We can get into that later, okay? I just want to get to this point. Um, he waited for the police officers in the front of the lobby to engage them. He made a lot of rants, not just about Trump, but about the Democratic Party, about Democratic donors, about Adra, 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 Adra. That's going to tie in with Diddy and a sugar daddy in a moment. Let me just get to the end of this. So I said, what's a girl to do? Something's not adding up. On one hand, they're saying he's in custody. On the other hand, there was an internal memo that said he was deceased. Now, I don't believe that he is deceased because after they said he was deceased, they set a trial date for him. However, I did find that information that they do criminal trials even if you're not alive. However, I do believe he he had an arraignment, even though I can't find proof of that, but he must have had an arraignment because charges were bought up against him. And baby, oh, the story the charges told. This is where things get super, super interesting. Let me just pull this up for you guys. I got to get into this. We need, I need to close up screen, put my reading glasses on. These charges were actually really crazy. And it was very, very weird and very unheard of. Let me just pull this up really quick. It's important. Ah, here we go. I sent so many things to myself. Anyway, hold on. Okay, here we go. See, this is what everybody screenshot and literally just didn't even bother to go a little bit further. We have the court case. Yeah, we have the case status. Got it. Jonathan Adi. We got it. His birthday, I guess, is February 3rd, 1976. What does that make him? February 3rd. Is he? No, he's an Aquarius. He's an Aquarius. The age of Aquarius. He's an Aquarius, right? This was filed on um, May 21st. 2018. Mind you, the report that the state attorney filed was uh, actually filed on April the 2nd, 2019. Again, there was a death hoax that just happened, but the first death hoax was back then. Again, if he had passed away in police custody, if he had done anything, there would have been something that actually said, okay? So why'd they write it? He has a defense attorney. His defense attorney is Christopher DeCoste. Christopher DeCoste, I researched him. He has been a criminal defense lawyer in Miami for over 17 years. Keep that in mind because you're going to need that little information. So just put a pin in that, right? There is a judge assigned to the case, Judge Carmen Cabarga, right? However, there's a hearing time, which everybody keeps yelling about. There's a hearing. There's a hearing. Oh, my God, guys, it's mine. There's a hearing. January 9th, 2024. And the first thing I said, because I said I wanted to research, because when I first people were telling me there's a hearing January 9th in the live chat last night, I researched everything y'all say. I was like, that kind of doesn't make sense because... If you know what I know, and you know what I know about the American justice system, and you know what I know about jurisprudence, this event happened in 2018, mid-year. We're about to hit 2024. And y'all know I'm not good at math. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You mean to tell me that this mofo that nobody can find, that don't got, according to them, has zero family in the U.S. He's South African by way of Argentina, but nobody can find his family in Argentina and nobody can find his uh, family in South Africa, but whatever, maybe I got to look harder, right? But you're telling me this mofo who is an American citizen who walked into the middle of a Trump Dora hotel, ambushed, according to the police, not me, ambushed the police with the extent and purposes of ambushing. And according to Mr. Perez, who is high up in the police, he was successful at ambushing. He hit two cops. I think he hit two or three cops. Definitely no less than two, no more than three. Actually hit 
two cops. You mean to tell me this mofo has been sitting in a detention center without seeing a judge for, over, for almost six MF in years? Now, listen, I know that people might not know about the justice system, but do you really honestly think that somebody did that to a cop and don't got and and literally has been sitting waiting for trial for six years? Maybe it could happen. But that's another thing where I was like, okay, something's not adding up. The attorney general is saying that he's deceased, even though when they do say it's deceased, that is sometimes what they do for witness protection. Also, what they do is they say, oh, we have you in custody and we're waiting for your trial, right? But the trial never comes up. So now we, and again, I'm not saying this is the case, but I am saying I was investigating, trying to make sense of these facts. So there's Jonathan Adi, who bang, bang, three police officers. The state attorney said, oh, no, no, he's deceased. And then magically, oh, he's not, he's standing trial. Okay, right? Now, mind you, when she would have said, this is important to know, it, let's just say what she said was true and he was deceased. I think that's even more damning than his fake uh, obituary because that means that a year after that interrogation video surfaced where he blew the top off of everything and everybody, a year after that surfaced, you finito, that should have been ringing the bells right there. But again, it's not my contention that he is deceased. It's not my contention. My whole contention is, where the F is this mofo? You can't tell me he's been waiting for trial for six years because get this, because I did a little bit more besides just screenshotting the, the top, okay? I actually went, because y'all know I'm petty. <laughs> I went and I screen recorded his whole case file. What is the case file? Whenever anything happens in the case, whether you're arraigned, whether it's discovery, whether there's more charges, whether there's witnesses, whether there's anything, when that happens, it must be put in the official docket so that anytime you, your, uh, the public, um, unless it's sealed, your, uh, your lawyer at any time can go online and see exactly in real time what is happening on your case. It is part of the U.S. constitutional jurisprudence so that, right, so that you can never be caught flat-footed. Let's just say they put in a motion to dismiss. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't know. No, 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 no. And the motion's granted. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't know. I didn't know. Run it back. The courts will say, no, it was put in the docket. It is your responsibility to check your docket every single day to see if there's any new motions filed, any paperwork. The docket literally is a snapshot of what is going on in the case procedurally and where you are in the case pr procedurally. Procedurally is exactly the way to describe Jonathan Odie because get this, not only has that mofo been sitting in jail, uh, no, the detention center for almost six years, but I actually went through his actual docket and screen recorded it for y'all. Look at this mess. Look at this mess. They subpoenaed over 200 people. They moved the trial date over six times. The prosecutor changed out 10 times. Every single time. And if you guys don't know, one of the things that, that slows down a case is when you subpoena new people, you need to find new witnesses, you need to do this. Why is this two to 300 people? Look at this, it's still going. This is the profile. This is all the entries that they put in for a simple shooting that was caught on camera with not one, but at least two injured officers. It's still going. This starts from 2000 and, uh, 2018 all the way up to present day. Look at this. And get this. It's not like they can't find witnesses because one of the things that actually slows people down is they're like, oh, we, sub we subpoena witnesses, but you know, they haven't answered, so we can't go to trial. No, 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 no. Every subpoena witness that they show, they literally have a date saying they acknowledged it and they have given their statements. They are ready to go. But see, here's the thing. This is how you slow down a trial. 
This is how you do. Now, let's talk about that trial because this is where things get really, really. I know I'm getting deep into the law and whatnot, but y'all know I love this. So I just want to share this with you, right? All right. Here's the interesting thing. When you actually get to look, we're still going through his trial docket. Do you know in all of this, he has not been in front of the judge? Do you know that for six years, they have just been filing paperwork and he has not been in, the, in front of the judge once? Not once. Not M effing once. Do you know that Jonathan Adi has never stood trial for anything that happened in 2018? Do you know the trial that's happening January 9th, 2024? It's the first time he will be held accountable for what he did. And do you know? that Jonathan Adi has had no less than 16 trial dates. Look at it right here. He has had no less than 16 trial dates. Damn it. I always mess up my own flow. He has had no less than 16 trial dates set for him to actually be held accountable for what he did. And do you know every single time it's, trying to, it's time to go to trial? There's always an excuse and the trial needs to be moved. There's no postponement. There's no anything. They just give a new date. They just give a new date. Let me read this for you. They just give a new date. They said, um, they, they say, uh, they just give a new date and they assign a new prosecutor. Now, when I said this, I said, okay, this is weird. So Jonathan has been in the correction facility for six years, right? Because you guys, you guys, we got it, got it. Case closed, case closed. No dummy. Case isn't closed, case just opened, right? So Jonathan has been in a detention center for six years, which you guys know is unheard of. You guys don't know if you're an American citizen, you are um, actually owed a fair and speedy trial. I actually looked into Florida legislation. They say anything under 175 days is acceptable. Anything over 175 days is infringing on your constitutional rights. Last time I checked, a year has about 365 days, give or take a leap year. That means that they basically have been holding him unconstitutionally because you know if they don't if, if they don't give you a speedy trial within the realm, speedy doesn't mean quick, but it means as quick as possible that you can actually sue the government for them to release you because you they have violated your constitutional rights. And a lot of people have gotten off like that. There was even something in Rikers Island where they were holding people for years that they shouldn't have. So I went into the Rikers Island stuff and I was like, okay, so if that happened in Rikers Island, maybe this is uh, what's happening with Jonathan Adi. Because you know me, I'm like, let me actually see. But no, here's the funny thing. With the Rikers Island stuff, it doesn't apply to Mr. Adi. You know why? Because aha, the people in Rikers Island were too poor to afford an actual lawyer. Unfortunately, the city of New York, it's one of the most, I can't even say a shameful piece of the history because it's still going on. They were so poor that they were relying on their public defenders to file the motions to get them out. And the public defender was like, we ain't got time for this. And so they were just being basically, in my opinion, Rikers Island being held hostage. Now, just to pose that with Jonathan Adi. Jonathan Adi has a lawyer. He has a lawyer that has been uh, in the game for 17 years. And from what I can tell, he is respected in the Miami-Dade area. It's not the point of whether his lawyer could sue to get him out. It's the point that you have a client that is paying you. The more motions you make, the more money you get. Not only that, a client can sue you for malpractice. If he has been held for almost six years without never once having a trial date, being held awaiting trial when there was no murder. Yes, there was a two cops that apparently maybe, right? But at the end of the day, the law, it's not whether the lawyer would have won the motion. It's the fact that any criminal attorney worth their salt when they saw their client being held in the state of Florida over 175 days, which is generally acknowledged as the cutoff for, okay, now you're dragging it. Like, are they going to trial or not? Because if they're not, you're going to have to release them, right? Anybody that had a client that was being held for more than 175 days would have put in a motion 
would have put in a motion to either get their client released or to get all charges thrown out. And it has happened plenty of times before. This is American jurisprudence. So when people say, oh, I don't really know the, okay, fine, right? The fact that if you look into this whole docket, which lets you know everything that has ever happened on the case, his lawyer, who is a trusted professional, has not made one, not one, not one motion. The, 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 nothing. That tells you something. Now let's get back into him being held so long, right? He's never been in a trial, ever. Do you guys, I don't know if you know anything about legal delays, legal this, uh, it is unheard of. It, when I say it's unheard of, I 100% stand on business. It is unconstitutional to hold somebody without a trial. You might get away with somebody that doesn't have a good lawyer. Jonathan Odie actually hired a good lawyer, right? But again, it goes back to where's Jonathan Odie. So let's look at the weirdness that we have so far. The state attorney lists Jonathan Odie as deceased on the actual report saying that the cops were justified to use criminal, I'm sorry, deadly force. Okay, maybe it was a typo. It's a weird typo. It's one you would want to pull down. He pops up in a detention center. All right, you committed a crime. You were arraigned. Oh, bond was de denied because you bang, bang, two police officers. I mean, come on, that's what you expect it. So you're chilling in this detention center. You go through, I think, two criminal defense lawyers. The first lawyer tapped out around 2021, never made any motions. The second lawyer came. He is well-respected. He has not made any motion. He does not care. There has not been a blip on this case. But yet, for six years, a case has been kicked down. A case of cops getting bang-banged in the lobby during Trump's... Well, at this point, I don't think Trump was... No, Trump was... No, was Trump president? No, he couldn't have been. I don't know why I thought this was the year 2040. Sorry. So <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Let me get my mind back in the game. During... At, right... And this happened right when Trump had was about to leave office in 2018 so he was about to leave office but i don't believe that had joe biden taken over it doesn't matter let's move on right because i have something to say and it's like jambling my mind right so again let's go back to this right let's go back to this let's go back to what's actually happening with jonathan adi where is jonathan adi and I'm being serious. So when you look at, right, this, we see his YouTube channel where four years ago, somebody made this whole thing and put it up. But I don't think it was Jonathan Adi, right? Because I know what you're saying about, oh, it's from a correctional facility, this and that. Maybe they have Wi-Fi. Maybe. But he put this little montage to himself up. Or maybe somebody was trying to put a montage to throw people off, especially putting it to CeeLo. Does that make me crazy? Oh, it's not over. There's more. There's more. There's more. Jonathan's wife was a lawyer that amicably divorced her. Outside of his wife, who was a lawyer, there's not a friend besides the guy that was on the scene. There is not a family member. There was a girlfriend who was mis mysteriously out of the country. Okay? Just to let you guys know, in case you think I'm bullshitting, in the United States, including the state of Florida, the right to a speedy trial is protected under the Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. However, there isn't a specific number of days or months defined universally of what constitutes a violation of this right. Determination of whether the right to a speedy trial has been violated depends on several factors. Hold on, y'all. Let's get into this a little bit more. Florida has its own rules and statutes that also govern this right. Under Florida Rules of Criminal Procedure, specifically Rule 3.191, a defendant in a felony case is entitled to a trial within 175 days of arrest or in a misdemeanor case within 90 days. However, these periods can be extended for various reasons, such as requests for continuances, unavailability of essential witnesses, and other court-related delays. There has, to date, and you can look on the docket, um, uh, never been any witness they subpoenaed. And again, he shut up the lobby 
The lobby was not holding two, 300 people in that hotel. So at the end of the day, it's ridiculous that they subpoenaed that many people. But again, it seems like they're trying to slow down the trial. But I would go so far as to say, it seems like they never want that trial to happen. Here's the whole thing about his lawyer. In any case, if the defendant feels the right to a speedy trial has been violated, violated, they can file a motion to dismiss the charges. The court will then evaluate the situation based on the above factors to determine if the right has been infringed. It's important for anyone concerned about this issue to consult a legal professional for advice specific to their situation. Again, why didn't his lawyer, any of them, File a motion to dismiss the charges. It doesn't matter whether he's guilty or not. Any good lawyer would have to file that because you've had your client sitting there for six years. Now, let's just just oppose this with a little bit more, right? Let's just move on and just oppose this because I want to get to this point. Let's look at somebody else who did a crime that was very similar in the same year, literally a month or two apart. Who am I talking about? We're talking about Caesar Sayak. Caesar Sayak was Jonathan's co-worker at the Dancing Beer. He had the same experiences, I'm guessing, that Jonathan did with clients, okay? Caesar Atileri Sayak was sentenced to 20 years in prison in connection with his mailing of 16 imprecise explosive devices to victims across the country, okay? So Caesar went to jail. Caesar was convicted, but let's look at the timeline to justify that with, uh, that's Jonathan's attorney, right? Let's look at the timeline to, ju to just oppose that with Jonathan. Okay, he pled guilty. He had 65 felonies for mailing 16 improvised devices in connection with October 18th domestic blank account. Now, again, why am I bringing this up? Because let's look at this. Caesar worked at the same place as your boy. We're not even counting the other people in that same year that were arrested for murking people that worked at the dancing beer along with Jonathan. So let, let's let's just line this up because my my head at this point was like, what is going on? This is so weird. Caesar committed 65 felonies. Jonathan only got four. Jonathan got a tape recording of him doing it because he was in the lobby, right? I remember seeing on the thing. Jonathan has all these things stacked against him, okay? Jonathan actually bang bang two police officers. Caesar, on the other hand, had 65 felonies. Do you know how long and hard it is to prove 65 felonies, to gather enough evidence to convict you of 65 felonies? These are all uh, individual, making individual kabooms, okay? He had use of weapons of mass destruction, interstate mailing of explosive, blah, blah, blah. He had a list of heavy charges. He was arrested in October 2018. Oddly enough, Caesar and um, Jonathan and those other guys that murk someone all committed their crimes within months of each other and all were employees of the Dancing Bear. Caesar was picked up in October 2018. He was convicted in, Mar in 2019. He was found guilty in 2019 and sentenced to 20 years in prison. So now I got to sit back and I got to say this. I honestly don't know where Jonathan Odie is. I honestly don't know what's going on with the hoaxes, why there's so much. I do know that the first person to actually do a death hoax on Jonathan Odie is the state attorney. I do know that they've been holding him indefinitely in jail for charges that literally were light work, no reaction to the prosecution. I do know that he had a coworker that not only committed similar, but more bad crimes because maybe he mailed this up to Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi. He had a list. He was like in it with Nas, uh, one mic, right? Right. And names on his hollow tip right? Mad bodies, his foot politics. He was ready to go. The things he did were more in depth, harder to prove, collecting evidence. He was convicted to for 20 years, not even a year later. So tell me why Caesar, I'm sorry, not Caesar, Jonathan, nobody can get an idea on him. Nobody really knows where he is. The state attorney says he's deceased. The correctional facility says, no, we have them. 
He has no family or friends in America, so he has no visitation list. How do I know that? I tried to get on it. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. That would be bad to actually do that, right? He has no friends or family, so there's no visitation list, right? In America, at least. He has been scheduled for a trial that has been going on, not even going on. You have been waiting six years to see a judge. There is no docket on his arraignment because usually when somebody is arraigned, there are minutes in the courtroom. However, maybe they did it in absentia. I don't know, right? Um, and it's six years. And when you look at the docket, it is almost 20 pages of nothing, of stalling. So why? Why would they do that? Why would they do that when they can easily, because he, oops, sorry, because he assaulted, um, sorry, I just, because he assaulted two police officers with a bang, bang, and they actually ended up, literally, he bang, banged two officers. They could easily put him underneath the jail. You know how it is in America. You talk back to a cop. You looking at a year. You hit a cop. You looking at how long. You bang bang a cop. Maybe you had two cops, three. You ain't never getting out. You can forget about that. You should have went on with Caesar. It would have gotten you less time. So why? Why is this happening now? Why is it happening? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. And if anybody has the answer. I would like to know. But y'all want to do that. Now let's get into the Ron Burkle. Hold on. Let me read some super chats and then we can get into this. Hey, what's up, Sharon Middleton? Welcome to the chat. Just buy it. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Oh my God, Lisa Rudgley. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Also, Rudy, great job of research and reporting. You're welcome, mama. Also, Leslie Ann Nori, thank you for all your hard work and keeping us all on farm. Please keep in yourself safe and blessings, baby. I'm covered. But thank you. I will try to keep myself. Let me stop being so braggadocious before God be like, hmm, right? Remember I was talking to you five years ago and you wouldn't listen. Anyway, LB, the Raging Cajun, thank you so much for the super chat. Where are we at? Also, Kizzy, thank you so much for joining the channel. Uh, Ella, oh, Rage Occasion, and you joined the channel. Thank you so much. Diana Salem, thank you so much for becoming a mi uh, member. M -N -M -N -M said, hey, Tisa, grateful I catch this live. That's right, mama. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Valentine TV said, I thought I missed you, Inspector T. You know I ain't going anywhere. D. Vander Volvenkamp says, Tisa, look into Odie's wife. Apparently, she's an attorney. Look into who she's represented. She had a client involved in legal proceedings with Diddy. There's more info out there. Girl, that's why I love chopping it up with y'all. Because y'all be sending me on missions, and I be loving getting to it. Okay, really quick, before we get into the Diddy, Burkle, and Odie thing, um, Renee Glover said, if the DOG don't hire you, girl, thank you for all you do. <laughs> thank you. Tiffany Celeste said, he used to be married. We got to find the ex-wife. Um, as we know, uh, she has to know if he's deceased also. If I'm not mistaken, Odie said in an interview that his ex-wife had a copy of the NDA. That is true. Sarah, thank you so much for the super sticker. You guys, let me just tell you what my theory is now in the more. And again, this is just my theory, okay? I think that in the beginning, somebody on the live, I forget what your name is. I know you want to say, I told you so. Was like, yo, I think, and they were in the comment section too. And was like, yo, I think Odie's in witness protection. I don't know where John Odie is. I know that the state attorney put deceased. Again, that could have just been a typo. You know how it is. People make typos all the time. Seems odd. I do know that he's been in this magical correctional facility, but he doesn't have a visitation list because he has no friends or family in the U.S. I do know that he has been held beyond what is constitutionally viable. He is literally in the process of a habeas corpus. His um, his lawyers, because he had two, could file um, proceedings to actually have the case dismissed because at this point, it is beyond unconstitutional. 175 days in Florida is usually the norm for a trial to start before you can move to have it dismissed. He has had that four, five, six times. Okay, fine. I do know that when you look at the docket, when everybody's like, oh my God, his trial date is January 9th, baby. He's had a trial date about somewhere between 13 and 16 times and he ain't never seen a judge. And every single time the trial date comes up, they find, it's not even a reason, 
they just mysteriously say, no, we're not going to court. They do. A couple of times they file for continuance. But when you click on the, the paperwork for no reason, it's not like they need more evidence. It's not like they need more people. It's not like they need more time. And it's not like Jonathan Odie's attorney is fighting for it because his attorney's not the one fighting for a continuance. It's the prosecution. The prosecution already has their case. We see it from um, the state attorney when she did the report, that was their actual case. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all feel what I'm saying. So anyway, um, that's where we are with Jonathan Odie. And I just want to say, I really do appreciate you guys actually rocking with me and helping us all figure this out. Because at the end of the day, we are trying to figure out what's going on. We don't need anybody telling us what they think it's not. Baby, if you're so smart about what it's not, can you put some research in to tell us what it is, right? Can you put some research in? But you're not going to do that because you're mad, because you're jealous, because you don't have the range, because you can't do the research, because you don't know what you're doing. And all you can do is just sit from the sidelines and worry about what I'm doing. Anyway, baby, I'm going to give you something more to worry about. All right? So let's get into this, okay? Um, again, the timing of the case is suspicious. Well, again, whether you believe, forget about the internet hoax stuff because we already debunked it on live, right? But again, I do tend to believe that there are a bunch of red herrings going on. And people can say what they want, but you cannot debunk a memo off of the state attorney's desk. And for everybody that's creeping in here looking for content, I put it up on the screen, screenshot it, you can Google it yourself. Again, nobody is explaining why all this is happening and why a man has been sitting in jail for six years when another man that did 10 times worse, that had a 10 times more, that literally your cases were a couple months apart, he got convicted the next year. Usually in high profile cases, unless it is complicated or it's something like murking where you need to get all this evidence, they are wrapped up within a year. Y'all been following a million trials, right? They are wrapped up within a year. So it makes you, it just makes you wonder, okay, so why is this case so complicated? Y'all got video proof. Y'all got the security camera footage. You have the police testimony. What more do you need? Is there something else we're missing? Unless, and this is where I speculate and just get into pure gossip. Unless Jonathan Odie, for whatever reason, is in witness protection. Unless Jonathan Odie, they want to make sure disappeared a long time ago. I will say, I'm going to be very, very interested to see if he actually goes to trial if he actually goes to trial on January 9th, because just like, and I quote, let me read some dates, just like uh, in July of 2018, in June of 2018, in October of 2019, in April of 2019, in, what is this, uh, February of 2020, in the fall of 2020, just like in um, still fall, spring of 2021, fall, spring of 2023. And just like even in this time, February, 2023, just like in April of 2023, just like in July of 2023, just like in August, 2023, just like in October, 2023, just like in November of 2023, how much you want to bet that that January 9th case in 2024 gets postponed again. Now, I'm not going to say what I'm saying, but I am going to ask y'all to ask, who, who wants to make a bet that we're going to revisit this in the year 2030? And Jonathan Adi's case will still be trying to get in front of a judge. Isn't that, if you think about it, the perfect cover? You in jail. We have custody. It's no problem. Okay, well, where is he? Because we need to lay eyes on this mofo. Oh, you'll see him at trial. But y'all rescheduled the trial over 20 times in the last six years for no reason. Y'all, 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 listen, listen. Somebody said, is there is. I'm going to hurt you. And Ricky Lynn said, is there is a 2030. I'm praying on it. I'm praying on it. But anyway, let me get back to these super chats, okay? Um, Veronica, thank you again for the super chat. Um, also, uh, D. Van der Bo Bo Boomkamp, 
Thank you again for the super chat. I know I already shouted you guys out, but I just liked your name. D. Vander Bolvenkamp. I love that. Sounds elegant. Okay. Amai Fai uh, said, good stuff. Miss Jenna Nye said, uh, thank you for the super sticker. And also, Kareem King says, Tisa for president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's up, Kareen? No, okay. So let's get into the link between this. So if you guys don't know, in his interview or interrogation with the police, he kept talking about conspiracies, taking up to the very top of the DNC, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. Y'all, remember how we said that Ron Burkle was Diddy's sugar daddy? Remember how... Um, what's his name? Uh, John Odie said that Diddy was on the phone, taking phone calls, doing this, doing that, doing business, why the F-offs were happening. Now, here's the thing. Around this time, Ron Burkle was investing heavy in Diddy. He had invested over, at this point, 300 million into Diddy. There was 100 million in Sean John, this, that, and a third. All right. So all this stuff is going on. Sorry. Granted, Ron Burkle and Diddy look so cozy. Ron Burkle holds Diddy's, host Diddy's coming out um, thing. That's my, uh, that's Diddy's words, not mine. The thing you need to realize is when you talk about Jonathan Odie and those connections to the Democratic National Party, okay? And he kept mentioning Diddy in with that too, in the full video. He kept wrapping Diddy up in that. And the, the uh, interrogator kept moving him away from that. Like, oh, come on, come on. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about you. Where do you, where do you go to school at? Where'd you grow up at? Which somebody of y'all said, and I forget who it was, said that that actually piqued their attention because they said it looked like that the interrogator was trying to find out more about who his friends and families and allies was because he wanted more information on them. I found it odd. And again, maybe the, inter the interrogation, they kept moving it because they just saw it sounded like hooky to them, right? But when you actually get into Ron Burkle and the ties to the Democratic Party that Jonathan Odie claimed that Diddy also had on top of moving weight and moving liquid this and doing this and doing that and the F-offs, right? The funny thing is about the F-offs, when you listen to... Um, What's his name? The freak offs. When you listen to Jonathan Odie talk about it, he's not really being like, oh my God, I was a victim. No, no, no. He's not trying to claim that. He's trying to claim that why it's going on. Diddy is slosh. Like he looks like he has a uh, problem with substances. Cassie also alleged that Diddy had um, some sort of addiction at that time. He also said that they were running some type of trafficking ring. And if you listen to the full video, he's saying that Diddy has ties politically, ara, 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 ara. It sounded a little bit hooky until I dove into Ron Burkle's ties to the politicians and to Diddy. Ladies and gentlemen, may I submit for your viewing pleasure, the Rock the Vote. If you guys don't know what Rock the Vote was, does anybody remember this? This is when Diddy went out of his way to jump into politics. This is where Diddy was handpicked by his fairy godfather to jump into politics. Now, why was he handpicked by his fairy godfather to jump into politics? How do we know this? Well, we know that Diddy was backed by Citizens for Change. It was a slick thing, Citizens for Change. Unfortunately, as we all know, Citizens for Change is the pet project and the political project of one Mr. Ron Burkle. One Mr. Ron Burkle. And unfortunately for Mr. Burkle, unfortunately for Mr. Burkle, um, it looks like citizens, right, for change and Diddy with the freak offs, it looks like that was actually, they, they were actually sued. Diddy was sued and Ron Burkle was in fact sued. We're going to get into how and when they were sued for this with the political ties. All right. Um, you, 
If you remember, Citizen Chain sponsored six voter die rallies in three swing states uh, before Election Day. A rally in Wayne State University in Detroit featured respondent actors, um, uh, respondent Diddy Combs, actor Leonardo DiCaprio, and rapper Mary J. Blige. I do want to say one thing. Isn't it odd the way Leonardo DiCaprio's name pops up in so many federal lawsuits, but he's never the one getting in trouble? That boy knows how to stay in trouble. Okay. Um, let me find the, the stuff that it's on page four. One second. Here we go. Sorry, guys. One second. Okay. Here's what was here was the issue that the government had. But what and who is behind citizen change anyway? I told that grocery billionaire, Democratic donor, and Clinton enthusiast, enthusiast Rob Burkle is the guru guiding Sean Puffy Combs' recent conversation conversion to political activism. A chance meeting in Miami last year put Ron in the fashion business when he crossed paths with Sean Diddy. The pair hit it off, and Ron wound up heavily investing in Sean Combs' clothing line. It's no coincidence that Diddy abruptly started his Citizen Change charity last month. Okay? They said Diddy struck gold with a $100 million deal with Ron Burkle on the Los Angeles-based Yucapaya, whatever, brothers, um, with Burkle's involvement quite possibly to fuel, um, to fuel, to give Sean the spurt to grow the line. By okay, so anyway, he gave him the money. Okay. The point is they got sued. Let me find the exact thing where they got sued. because I'm. They literally got sued for... Um, basically election interference. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's long. I'll put the link in there, right? They got sued for election interference. Now, the thing is about this that makes it so big is the fact that they were basically trying to say that Diddy was Ron Burkle's puppet to mobilize the Black community. Once Burkle invested with them, okay, and who knows why, Burkle decided to use him as a straw man to be able to leverage the black vote, leverage community vote. But also around that time, there were a lot of politicians. There was a lot going on. There was also a lot going on with the Clintons, a lot going on with democratic leadership and unbeknownst to everybody, a lot going on with Jeffrey Epstein. Now, I'm not saying that Diddy and Burkle and all those people were involved in Jeffrey Epstein. I am saying that Jeffrey Epstein's Florida residence was ground one grooming center before they sent everybody out to the island. Jeffrey Epstein, it has been proven, had deep connections in politics. That's one of the reasons why he never got prosecuted in Florida and why he never got prosecuted in New York. Because baby, don't forget, didn't y'all see the documentary? They were even cool with the police chief in Florida, the same police chief that was frequenting the dancing bears, literally making fake, getting, making burner email accounts with city employee addresses, like, you know, like at .gov Miami or whatever, dummy, right? <laughs> but he was doing all that. So let's actually get into this because this is the connection that it sounds like that what's his name Jonathan was trying to make before the interviewer kept cutting him off. When you say that seems pretty far-fetched that they would try to get into campaigns and influence elections of presidents, elections of senators, elections of congressmen, does it really seem that far-fetched? Because again, one of the reasons why Epstein was not prosecuted in Miami or in New York is because he had everybody from the state attorney, the attorney general, the district attorneys, from the mayors to the police chiefs. Again, I cannot stress this enough. The fact that everybody's talking about the death host, but not the fact that the police chief, the same police chief that was a frequenter of Dancing Bear, the same police officers that were frequent, the frequent customers of Dancing Bear, the same people that were ambushed at the Trump Dorrell Hotel by one of the escorts that worked at the Dancing Bear that wanted to take out the police. 
in Miami-Dade, okay? And when you look at how insidious Epstein was, Epstein kept a book of blackmail for politicians so that whenever he needed a favor, whenever he needed to get out of jail free card, whenever he needed something done, he would just use that as information. A lot of people do think that Epstein is some sort of, uh, was some sort of CIA operative. I'm not going to lie. I kind of do think that too. Because when you hear about the way that Epstein passed away, you said, ain't no way. Maximum security, all these cameras. There's supposed to be three guards looking at the cameras at all time and a guard right there. The guard in front of your cell leaves. The guards are supposed to be watching uh, you on the closed circuit, you know, the security sur surveillance leaves to go on break. Another guard doesn't, doesn't, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Relieve them. Then on top of that, while they're gone and they know eyes on you, either from the video or from your, uh, from outside your cage, the surveillance cameras mysteriously get cut off. When they come back on, you're mysteriously, you deleted yourself. And then once you deleted yourself, when people are like, uh-uh, you got to do an autopsy on that. The coroner turned around and said, whoops. And everybody's like, whoops, what? And the coroner was like, oh gosh, guys, I thought you guys said cremation. And everybody was like, what? And they're like, we thought you said cremation. We wouldn't let you do an autopsy, but we cremated the body 24 hours after we got it. That's what happened to Epstein. That's what time they're playing on, right? But anyway, Epstein one of the things that he taught everyone, and he was so good with politicians, is when you have political power, you basically are a god and you can do what you want. Ron Burkle was hanging around Clinton Epstein hard. As a matter of fact, even this year, that year that it happened, Ron Burkle had given an estimated 15, yeah, 2018, 2019, an estimated $15 million to the Clintons just because that's also not even counting what his hedge fund actually gave them. But you know, Bill and Hillary, one thing they going to do is condemnation, right? Say what you want, whether you like them or not, baby, they always went to where the money resided, right? So now we have Ron Burkle, who was mentioned by, well, mentioned by Sam Odie with the puppies trying to get into um, blah, blah, blah. He has all these powerful friends, blah, blah, blah. Puppies trying to get into politics, right? You got, um, what's his name? Uh, Jeffrey Epstein showing him how it's done. Think about it. He's showing him how it's done. He's controlling the mirror, this, this, and this. Ron Burkle wants in on that action. He somehow magically starts pumping money into Diddy, along with maybe some other stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But he's definitely pumping money in, right? And then all of a sudden, Diddy decides to get actively involved in the campaign. He decides to get actively involved and create a charity called Rock the Vote. I'm sorry, Citizen for Change, Rock the Vote, and literally go out of his way. I know y'all remember that, to mobilize the minority group. You guys, has it ever occurred to you guys that what Diddy was doing down in Florida was pay for play? When we looked at who are these people that let Diddy get away with it, who turned the other cheek? Diddy seems like he was fine to be a tool. Did he seem like he was fine to sell out the community? Did he seem like he had high aspirations? And in return for Diddy going along with the get along, Diddy got to do whatever he wanted. No police got involved, just like Epstein. Nobody could say anything, just like Epstein. People got hurt, nothing happened, just like Epstein, right? And now, right? When you actually look at this, and this is the part that's crazy to me, you have Odie in an interrogation room letting you know where everything's buried and the cops didn't even try to investigate it. I know what people say, oh my God, it sounds crazy. But from what I understand with cops, aren't they supposed to do it like a little tertiary? I expect that from like whatever. Guys, you guys, look, look, case closed. But outside of that, you know what I'm saying? Again, it's interesting that and at the end of the day, when Puffy did try to mobilize, they actually got sued because the things that they were doing was illegal. They're even talking about the way funds were handled, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, let me actually get into what else is there? I got to make my next story. Hold on. He wanted to get the vote out in Detroit. Oddly enough, it was Diddy and Mary J. Blige. They were rolling hard together. He was honoring activism. He was doing everything he could. 
I think we could think maybe Ron Burkle was trying to create a power nexus, one that rivaled the power nexus that Epstein had built. Again, people like Ron hung around, you look, you listen. Epstein was a little bit too creepy to you, but you definitely have political aspirations. He even has political aspirations down, but to become a power player, Diddy was fine to do that. Again, Jonathan Odie, the man that has been sitting there without a trial for no reason for six years, even though he got a criminal attorney, a man that the state attorney has listed in the paperwork as deceased. That was the first death hoax, because if you believe he is alive, at this point, I just want to see him. I really want to see if he shows up for trial on January 6th, but I just want you guys to know he has been scheduled for trial 20 something odd times and baby each time the trial comes and the trial goes and nothing happens let's see if he actually makes it to trial on january 6th because you know what it would be nice to see proof of life because at the end of the day the last time anybody saw jonathan odie heard from jonathan odie saw anything about jonathan odie the very last time we saw was one that was in that police interrogation video okay that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Again, is he in witness protection? I don't know. But I do know from my, my research on witness protection, this is when they want you to disappear. This is exactly how it happens. And the perfect cover is you're being held, right? You're being held in a facility awaiting trial. Even go look at the crime families. This is what they do. Like with Sammy the bull snitch, you're being held because they don't want people out there looking for you. It's like if it's like, oh, what? Word? Tisa's released and she's snitching. Where's she at? Let's go find her. They don't want you looking for them. So what they'll say is, no, 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 no. We're pressing charges against Tisha too. Mm -mm. We have her. We're holding her for six long years. And then after that, they don't look for you anymore. You get reassigned. You do whatever. Again, I'm not saying he's in witness protection, but I would like somebody to actually give me an answer as to what is actually going on. Leslie Ann Nori said, don't forget Ice Cube has publicly stated that the same people who own the record labels own the gels in America. B, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? What's up, B? How you doing, girl? Thank you so much for joining me. You always here. I'm keeping you up late, but thank you so much, B. So let me get to the comments, right? Because I really do want to hear. I got a little bit more tea to spill, but I'm going to wait because, you know, I'm going to wait. But like, honestly, so what really is going on? Does anybody have any theories? Let me get to the comments, right? Listen, does anybody have Birmingham, Edenly? I thought you were saying Birmingham, Alabama. What's up, Birmingham, UK? They said the man is still here. Okay. Somebody said this Jonathan Olden guy arrested 2018 and one year later, Epstein is arrested 30 Five days later, Epstein dead. No autopsy, just fingerprints and photos of Epstein's had a cellmate. Exactly. I forgot the best part. Thank you so much, Kay. Epstein had a cellmate. So let's get this straight. Jonathan Odie loses his mind, gets arrested. 2018, one year later, he's arrested 35 days after the day that whatever. Um, 35 days later, he is gone. Jonathan Odie allegedly is still there. His trial date's been rescheduled. Again, I, I wish that I could I could have bought a lawyer on to let you know how not just weird, insane, but illegal, unconstitutional it is to hold somebody for almost six years and deny them a trial. Those charges can actually be dismissed. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said, maybe back in South Africa, those YouTube death videos that are in another language. I think that's in uh, some type of Hindi language. But again, the death videos, listen, y'all, Tattletales, we already know what it is. We already debunked them real time live. So like, y'all don't got to worry. Y'all don't got to defend me. These people, they just want something to say. And who cares? We ain't talk about them, baby. We do an investigation, right? So it's cool, right? Somebody said, people have been disappeared for years and nobody know. But when you have people in powerful places that have access to money and jail, anything can happen. Yeah, that's the thing. I just don't know where he is. That's it. That's it. There's the hoax. Yes. But did anybody notice the death hoax that allegedly the attorney general did? Do you see that? I'm sorry, the state attorney did. Again, I say all this to say there's just a lot of odd things. And I'll let you guys draw your own conclusions because I know that you guys are smart enough. 
one, you're all smarter than me to literally draw your own conclusions. Okay. You're smart enough. You want to y'all giving me stuff. So I really honestly, it's like, yeah, I'll be in the comment sections looking, but everybody, um, needs to just look, do the research and draw their own conclusions because no matter where you fall in it, something's not right. Something's not right. And anyone that's being honest could just be like, yo, there's just something not right, right? Somebody said, look up NDAA and infinite detention. Let's see if that works. Hold on. NDAA and infinite detention. Yeah, here's the thing about infinite detention. The only problem with that is that is a federal law. It gives the United States military the power to infinitely detain Americans without charge or trial. Here's the problem with that. That is a federal thing. For that to actually apply and be uh, to apply, he would have to be in federal detention. He's not. This never rose to the level of federal. This is a state case. So since it is a state case, the law of Amendment 350 um, of infinite detention, indeed, it doesn't apply to Jonathan. But that's a good guess. But no, 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 no. It doesn't. Uh, it says that American citizens and green card holders cannot be put in. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. So this is definitely a federal law. It does not apply to state detention. Again, I put up the Florida law. It's only 175 days. For him, for that to actually apply, he would have to be held in federal custody. He's in state custody, so that law doesn't apply. But that's a good guess. Thank you so much for putting that in. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Somebody says, it depends what county you are in in West Palm Beach and Dade. They look the other way at the time. The only county will investigate is Boward. I get that, but the one thing you guys are forgetting is he has a very, very, very good criminal defense attorney. It's not the fact that they would look the other way. Whenever your attorney submits something to the court, the judge must either say yes or no to it within, I believe, 10 days at the least, 30 days at the most. It's not the point of whether the attorney's motions were denied. It's the fact that why didn't the attorney make the motion? He is paying them for that. The attorney gets paid for that. Do you see what I'm saying? Y'all see what I'm saying, right? I know that they'll look the other way, but like, yeah, the only thing with that is like, you know, right? Um, yes, who's saying? Angie said he's in Miami Dade. Yes, public knowledge online. Yeah. Again, you guys. It's not the issue that he's in Miami Dade. Is it the issue that he is being held for over six years? I can't believe that y'all think that I can't believe that y'all think a U.S. citizen can be held without a trial for six years and have an attorney. And that's just it. It's illegal. Even under Florida law, it is unconstitutional. Uh, uh, anyway, right. Listen, listen. Well, I don't know. Somebody said, you're connecting dots too fast. Once you expose Jonathan, it's kind of took you off of Diddy. Many were released in Chicago due to not having trials within 30 days. Exactly. No, but here's the issue with Jonathan and Diddy. Jonathan is the first male FO to speak out. Again, I'm going down this rabbit hole about what actually, um, I'm going down the rabbit hole of Everybody tied to Diddy. And this Jonathan Adi guy, we need to talk about it. I think that we've said enough about Jonathan Adi and we can go back into Diddy. But as of right now, what's going on with Diddy? People falsely reporting that his house got raided. It did not. People falsely reporting that he sacrificed nine people in a satanic ritual. You don't be having satanic rituals in the middle of basketball games in, in New York, you know? But we're going to get back on Diddy because I have been in contact with people, some new lawsuits that's coming out, MTV, Viacom, or whatever. But again, you guys, we are doing fact-finding missions, and that's what I want, okay? Again, you guys, again, 
We've been on Diddy's ass. We, we ain't letting up on Diddy. But at the end of the day, guys, let me get out of here and actually drop a Diddy video. I'll talk. I, <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Okay. Wait, did I miss anybody? Hold on. Let me do the whole uh, super chat thing and say thank you to everybody. B4. Um, is there any other comments? Hold on, y'all. Let's see. Uh, Red Pill Neo Matrix said, oh, thank you, Sid. Appreciate seeing a true investigating reporting. Majored in the same field. Kudos. I know that's right, Red Pill. Um, let's see. Zamanami said, look up, oh yeah, look up the infinite detention thing. We did, it's good, but it just doesn't apply to Jonathan Odie. So at the end of the day, we will have to put Jonathan Odie on ice, see what happens January 9th. Now let's see what's going on with Diddy in London because allegedly with that Ron Burkle mess, that was just the tip of the iceberg about what's going with the Rock the Vote stuff. I thought it was interesting to include. Again, I bring you guys everything I find. We're going to get back into the more salacious Diddy stuff. But I thought you guys would enjoy that. So really quick, I want to say thank you so much to Crystal Cove, Naughty Love Movement. I want to say thank you to Sharon Middleton. Thank you, Jess Bahia. Thank you, Lisa Rootley. Rudely. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Leslie Ann Norris. Thank you, Ellie B. Thank you, Kizzy. Thank you again, Ellie B, for blessing me twice. Thank you, Diana Salem. Thank you so much, NM. Thank you, Valentine TV. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Miss Divander Bolvenkamp, right? Thank you very much, Renee uh, uh, Glover. Thank you so much, Tiffany Celeste. Thank you so much, Sarah. So much, Veronica. Thank you again for blessing me, Miss Divander Bovenkamp. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Miss uh, Gemini. Thank you, King King. Thank you, Leslie Ann Nori. Thank you, B. Thank you, Red Pill. And thank you, Zamina. Uh, so much for joining me. Anyway, y'all, let me get out of here. I will talk to y'all later. Don't worry, I'm gonna have some good videos up later on tonight and a few Diddy videos up tonight. And baby, we getting back into the salacious stuff. Young Miami, we going into Quincy, Justin Combs. And baby, we also gonna talk about some showstopper, show, showstopper. I have some juice on that Danity K mess. It is no joke. All right, y'all, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.